Welcome to Insight Builder channel. Large language model automators, agent enthusiasts and my dear friends. Can you tell me about LLM agents? Using Jinja 2 template and create prompts for agents. That's what we are going to discuss in this video. In the last video, we were uh, discussing on uh, creating a simple agent that we saw here and uh, we are going to move forward in this steps so in order to uh, make the simple agent to get an objective start using cot that is chain of thought or any any new prompt methods we have to uh, you know bring the prompt along with the query that we are having and the context most important thing is we have to bring the context also and we need to bring these thing all these things together and feed it to the agent so for that we will be using something called as Jinja templates. So what is a Jinja template? Jinja is basically a templating engine that makes programming with text easy. That is the primary uh, purpose of Jinja. It's like if you are from Python background, it's like supercharged string literal. So what happens is you can see the example here. So there is a text and there are two spaces here. And in these two spaces, the variable one and variable two get positioned when you run the template engine. This is what happens exactly when you are using the Jinja template engine. Now, here you are seeing a very simple two variable uh, populate population inside the text template. However, we can actually do more than that. So here you can see an example where, uh, uh, where there is two, two variables that is getting positioned into this simple looking uh, sentence where uh, I am becomes variable one from variable two. So that will become I am a human from earth. So that's how this will get transformed. Next comes loops. So this is where the power of templates becomes in, uh, exponential. So you can actually take uh, the uh, idea of loops or lists dictionaries in uh, various uh, languages especially Jinja 2 template that we are going to discuss is from Python perspective, but the templating engine is also available for other languages also from different uh, flavors. But we are going to discuss about Python templates only. Python Jinja uh, module only. Here you see I have I am having a list of elements that is 25798, which I am going to use a for loop inside the inside the Jinja template and I will actually create five instead of five sentence. I am a two, I am a five, I am a seven, I am a nine, I am a eight, eight. So like this, it will actually create five outputs here. So this is, uh, you know, uh, the way you can actually feed the information to the agents. So if you look at this, uh, you know, step extensively used in feeding the LLMs with context that can be modified programmatically. So you must have come across, you know, a lot of steps where the LLMs does the task and it as if looks as if, you know, uh, the AI itself has uh, come up with this kind of a decision, right? But in fact, in the background, the prompts are getting modified and the prompts are actually modified using program, uh, the programmatic way. And all these, if you see all this, uh, the, uh, what is it called? Uh, the agent, uh, agentic software that you are seeing here, all these things use some or the other way of prompts. And we are going to dive into how we can use Jinja 2 in action. Let's actually move to the notebook. So in order to, uh, I can, I'm not going to deep dive into Jinja 2 module as such. Okay. So Jinja 2 module, if you want, there are lots of other uh, videos to explore here. My intention is to show you what is required for uh, using Jinja 2 along with the agent software or LLM related agents. So that's my intention, right? So for that, all you need is these four, uh, uh, attribute, uh, these four uh, classes and uh, functions from Jinja 2. That's what you are going to use. And then we are going to first of all create an environment. So the environment basically tells to the Jinja template engine that where the prompt templates will be. So as you saw here, there will be two parts. So there will be just a second. So there will be this prompt template. 
and this prompt template will be inside a file and this file will be located somewhere in a folder right inside the uh, operating system so the folder itself will become an environment in this uh, case and uh, the files inside uh, the prompt files that is inside the folders will become individual uh, templates so that's how it works so you can have any number of templates and each template will have different different input variables so let's actually go back in our case the uh, prompts will be located under jinja underscore prompt folder let me show you that you can see in the left side of my vs code window you can see the exploring agents folder this is inside the python d learners data github repo and you can uh, if you go into the exploring agents folder you will see jinja underscore prompt folder and on the same level of jinja underscore prompt folder i have this jinja prompt notebook so this notebook that you are seeing here so it should be in the same level if it is going to be in a different location you need to give the complete path or else the templates will not get recognized so inside the jinja underscore prompt you will see all this prompt templates so what are these prompt templates so let us open a simplest template that is spec underscore prompt yeah it is actually a text file the extension actually looks little misleading it it makes you think okay prompt file will be something uh, you know magical but no it's it's a very simple text file which has these tags a different kind of a tag this is called as a jinja tag uh, you, you it will have a different name but i am going to call it jinja tag i am going to close this and you can see that this template is very similar to what i introduced here it's very similar to this this area is what you are seeing in this area inside this right so what will happen is this entire prompt this entire you know text file will become uh, uh, become a template and this text file will ask for three inputs that is app underscore type name and prompt in order to read the template in order to start working with rendering this template all these things uh, we, we will be doing it in the notebook right now so let's proceed so here we are going to use file system loader class and we are going to load this jinja underscore prompt folder and we are going to use select underscore auto escape for this environment i am not diving into the explanation of jinja environments i would suggest you to take a look at a different uh, video for this my intention here is to primarily show you how the prompts are programmatically created and various tasks are achieved so in the next video we will see how the tasks are achieved let's proceed I, here are a couple of uh, helper functions that i have created in case of uh, in case of these templates so i have uh, you know tried to uh, explore the jinja modules and i have come across these various uh, methods uh, that is uh, the get source will actually tell you how to get the variables so there are variables inside this uh, temp, uh, prompt template that is app type name and prompt we will be needing this time to time if you are going to work with new prompt templates so for that you can actually use this get required vars so function and if you want to load and render the template so if you want to give a context and if you want to load and render the template then this is the function that you need to use so what exactly happens in these cases we will be seeing step by step right now uh, we have actually loaded the uh, jinja underscore prompt folder into env underscore template variable and if you list the template under that you will be looking at all these prompts the same prompts that we saw right now so the same prompt that you are seeing here that's what you are seeing here and each of these uh, files or each of these names can be used as a template and we can load the template like this so in order to load the template we have to call the environment that is env underscore template in our case we have to say get template and we have to provide the name of the template that you have here following that you can actually use this get required vars so this is the um, function that i have already created and you will see that it is providing the various uh, inputs that you need to provide why you need these inputs you have to know what kind of inputs you need to update so that you can actually send it to the template when you are going to render it i'll be explaining what is rendering in next so let us first of all look at the inputs so the app type the name and the prompt so if you look at if you read this particular uh, text so i want you to create app type let's call it name that can be described like this prompt 
so this is the prompt that we are going to send to the large language model and based on that prompt only it is going to create a application for us the code for us right and below we are also telling that you need to think step by step about the description of this app type name and additional questions and answers so this is the full prompt that you are going to send and this prompt is going to this prompt template is going to be common for any kind of app that you are going to build as you have seen in the earlier video that i introduced i had you know worked with the with the cli app that processes the text and we saw that it was able to give us the task etc correct that is happening because of this particular prompt let's move forward so here we have the app type name and prompt i have given some inputs here and after that i am going to run this load underscore temp dot render so you have loaded the template here that is load underscore temp and i am going to use this render and if i render it you will see it is empty so the here it is empty there is no prompt here there is no uh, app type and there is no name in order to fill these things with the respective va values we need to actually send the data into the render so you can actually do it two ways either you can create a dictionary like this or you can come you can uh, update here step by step uh, as app type equal to command line name equal to text processor prompt equal to app but it is always better to use this syntax it's uh, it makes it little more concise and you can see that once i do this way you can see that create command line text processor and the app that processes the text and provides output so once you use the input it gets filled in all, all of the locations so this is how the jinja template works again i am repeating it so you have you actually get the template from the uh, template folder by using the get template or the environment and then you get the required vars to know what kind of variables are required by the template you create the context with the data that you want to send to the template then you render it using the context and that's how you will get the output so we are going to do some more additional steps right now so here you saw the template was having uh, no any loops but what if we want to create loops so for that we are going to use a different kind of a input so uh, from the previous video i had uh, classified the tasks that i received from the large language model and i have this json file with me so json uh, list with me and i have five uh, tasks and their classifications i want to create a prompt that can actually load all these things in in the sequential fashion so for that i'll be using this <coughs> i i am showing this data analysis prompt here but it's better that i show it in the um, in the output yeah so this is the data analysis prompt and you can see that i am creating the uh, prompt here and here i am telling that it's a for loop where i say payload in task list so task list will be the input and i am going to get the task from the payload and the task class from the payload and i am going to end the for loop so this is how i have created the prompt template let's go back just a minute and here i am going to uh, get this template data analysis dot prompt i'm just going to render it here and show it to you and then if you get the required val uh, vars for this data analysis prompt you will see that it is question and task list so it is the question here and the task list that we are using here this is very important so here i am actually running this uh, task enumerating this task list for each individual tasks and i am going to extract individual elements in the task list sorry and from the elements i am going to extract the task and the task class so this idea you can actually get it from this input so each element of the task list will be this and from each element i will be extracting the task and the task class and then i will be populating the uh, populating the entire uh, uh, prompt and the same prompt so you see you are working in software development agency as data analyst and you will see that i have right now have this task along with this uh, output the classification and the second task and the third task and the code execution and finally i am asking how many tasks are present above so my question so all these things 
so the question is how many tasks are present and the task list is classified tasks and i am only using three tasks here so that's why you are seeing this you can actually increase this and you can see let me try to show you by increasing it to six and uh, let us see i okay i think uh, the data is not uh, <clears throat> the uh, class uh, the cells are not executed just a second let me execute the cells sorry about the delay so now you can see that there are more number of tasks and finally i am asking how many tasks are present above so that is how the prompts get populated and now you can visualize that how the entire prompt setup is getting worked right let us actually you know take one more example so some uh, in uh, certain cases we might actually want the large language model to connect with the internet and start getting the information from the internet and use it as a context to provide our answer right and for that we have various clients that is available right now like we have the tabili client which i introduced in another one video and also we have the bing client that you can use the bing apis also you can use here what you are going to do is i am going to show you so here i am not going to run these uh, uh, clients anyway so if you have a question so if you have a question i can use this question and i can search it in the internet the search engines and i can try to get the feedback this feedback i can actually feed it back into the prompts okay so one such prompt is what i have created here so if you go into the agent jinja prompt and if you go into code extraction prompt so this is one such prompt so i am telling you are an ex expert coder and researcher and uh, you are approached by a program manager with a question and uh, after that you have researched about it and you have got the code and it is present in the net data and then you are going to populate all these things and based on this information i am telling to the llm that write the code by mentioning the programming languages first so this is how i am building the prompt and if i go back here and you see that all these things are done automatically programmatically so that's the key point i wanted you to you know take back today so here if you if i actually open this you will see that there are lots of output that has come up here this is by searching the internet literally by searching the internet using this query equal to question using tavili dot search method i have got this feedback and i can take this data and i can send it to the uh, the prompt that i showed you right now this prompt and i'll be sharing that in couple of minutes same way you can use uh, the bing uh, api also so i have done the same thing here i have built the url and uh, the headers and then i have sent that into the request dot get and i have got the output so when i get the output the output will be like this so it will be very long there will be lots of information in the search output correct all i am doing is i am actually taking all those output and i am putting into search underscore out list and then i am going to use the code extraction prompt template there i am going to use net data so this net data is what we have it here right this is very important you need to understand where the the data from your uh, python execution environment enters into the prompt template and then we have the question so that question is pretty straightforward and once i use this in context and render it you will see that you are expert coder researcher and uh, split the text file with the list of, uh, so this is the question split a text file with the list of tasks that are separated with the uh, new line so the new line character did not get shown here so if you go up here if you look at the question i have actually placed a new line character here so this i have to escape or else what will happen it will it will actually go as a, a new line character and you will not be able to see so i have to escape this and using python code so that that's what you are seeing in the output here so after this uh, slash n is there so that's why they're using the python code has come here and all this are the search results right all these are the search results and finally here is the prompt that write the code by mentioning the programming languages first and your code so when i in the next videos we will you know further discuss on how to take these uh, prompts and work with system prompts and then send the uh, information to the large language model that is request to the large language models and then get the feed uh, get the output and then process it further so that will be in the next video so i believe that in this video you have got a fair idea on how to use jinja to templating engine 
and build the prompts so we have uh, you know literally dismantled couple of uh, parts of an agent as of now i have shown you in the previous video i will be linking that uh, video link in the description so take a look at that in the previous video we discussed about the way we can use agents and you know build it to run the task step by step and finally get the output that you want and in this video we are seeing how to use the prompts and build it build the inputs to the agents or that is the large language models and then we went into each and every step of uh, building the prompts using jinja2 templates we saw how the variables works and how we can loop through the values even now you can actually visualize that how if you are going to take the context from a vector store if you are going to take a context from the neo4j kind of a uh, graph database how are you going to feed it to the uh, the prompt you will have to use similar kind of a templating engine only because the llms are going to read the text it's not going to read anything else and jinja2 templating engine is one of the best available uh, options and most of the prompt templates are using that only in in some form or the other there is actually pydantic also but pydantic is used in a different way in order to control and validate the outputs but it's not for actually giving the input so keep that in mind if you just got confused i believe that you got learned a thing or two from this video so do leave a like and share it with others most importantly it's very uh, confusing these days because if you if you scroll down there are lots of uh, uh, a based uh, agents that is getting uh, populated into this into our ecosystem but most of the agents even if you try it they actually fail at one level or the other you have to understand what kind of prompts are actually being used and most of almost all a couple of them are closed source but other uh, agent based uh, softwares uh, the github repos show where their prompts are and how you can work with it and couple of prompts that i have taken from for this video also i have taken it from fabric as well as gpt pilot uh, huge kudos and uh, shout out to these uh, teams who worked on these things and devika ai is one of the inspiration for this videos because the devika ai uh, video, uh, the github repo is well coded meaning it's easy to understand uh, to dive into the uh, back end and uh, you know go through the process so i got some ideas by reviewing this devika ai uh, code only so huge shout out for that team also with that said i would like to leave this video with four words that is keep exploring keep exploring see you guys have a great time